over the past four years, I have been in so many situations in which other people weighed in and they told me you should go one way or another. And they all wanted what was best for me. I genuinely believe that. I have learned to listen to this inner voice that I have. Deep down, no matter what I'm doing, no matter what happens, I listen to this voice. So I'm gonna tell you today a short story about how the engineering choir was started. When I was a freshman and I came to Texas A&M University, I didn't want to come to A&M to study engineering. My dad had said no to me going to music school. And I sat down in my dorm room, or I was in White Creek Apartments actually, I sat down in my room and I said, okay, I'm here now to study engineering, what am I gonna do? So I joined a couple musical organizations, but they just didn't resonate and scratch the itch that I really, really wanted to scratch. I had grown up and I had come from Houston and Houston has a wonderful arts culture. I'd had the privilege and opportunity to work as part of the Houston Grand Opera Company. Coming from that to Texas A&M, I thought, how am I in the world going to combine my interests and make this work with what my dad wants me to study? At the end of my freshman year, I had this moment where I was sitting on the back of a bus, a tour bus for that one of the organizations that I was part of musically. And I turned to my friend and I said, I wanna conduct a choir. I think I could do it. And he looks at me and he goes, well, why don't you? And I said, oh my God, well, why don't I? And so in the tour bus, I started texting my advisor, Professor Shayla Rivera. And I said, we have to start this engineering choir. We've gotta do it. I talked about this to my dad, and my dad is an engineering type, so he likes forecasting. He's all about that one expression, past performance is no indicator of future performance. You know, he's an engineer to the T, PhD in mechanical engineering, worked a long time in risk and failure analysis. So he looked at me and he said, what is your resume gonna be like if you drop this organization? And I said, I don't know, but if I stay, it's gonna be worse because I could have a good resume but suffer emotionally or I could just leave and just try this thing, try this new thing. Professor Rivera's already agreed to back it and sponsor it. I could just try it. And he said, this isn't a really good risk to take. And I said, I know, but I can't live my life any other way without taking this risk. I believe that we take risks not because we want to, not necessarily because we're just like, oh my gosh, today I'm gonna just do this thing. I think it's because there's no other option sometimes. We have to, we have to jump and we have to leap before we look sometimes. The engineering choir started just four months after I had left that organization my freshman year and it became a smashing success. We got a whole officer team together. In our first aud open audition, we got 100 submissions. And then from those 33 in the second round, and in our first choir, we chose the top 23 to be in the choir. We sang a concert, we sang a holiday concert. I invited my past directors who I had talked with because I had sat down and talked to them and said, I don't really feel fulfilled. And they said, listen, pursue your joy. We're in a place where we can you know, relax a little bit. We're a little later in life, but you're 20 what? And I said, I'm 18. And they said, you need to go out there and start pursuing what you like. They came to my first concert and since then, it's opened up this world of opportunity. And everywhere I look, I see just a miracle happening. Something new is just popping up. And somebody, the perfect person who I need for a thing, or I become the miracle to somebody else, where they just needed somebody um, to do this X, Y, Z thing, and I could do that exact thing. When that happens, when that miracle happens, I always say thank you to that inner voice because I had this moment where I was sitting on my bed at the end of freshman year and I was like, oh my God, am I really gonna do this? Am I really going to quit and start this whole new thing? It's scary and I don't have anything on my resume. I'm gonna be a sophomore. If I drop this, I won't have anything else. And since, you know what, the resume, I can tell you will fill itself. Life will fill itself, but you just make the decisions that are consequential to you. So persist even when others tell you that it's not financially economically and resume viable persist even when you believe that you yourself can't pull it off persist even when you believe you can pull it off but you feel like you're going to hit some obstacles persist anyway because that's all you can do is keep putting one foot in front of the other and just keep moving forward day after day and slowly just like a plane the way a plane changes direction is not by making a drastic turn, but by shifting just one degree, 
And then you end up in a totally different place in 30 minutes than where you would have been if you just stayed in one course. So every day, just change one degree. And that's all you need to do is persist that one degree. And that's what it takes to make your dream a possibility, no matter how hard it is, just that one degree. I am a persister.